Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to some more Lego building. Happy Friday. We are back to work on the uh, El Dorado Fortress. We got the uh, the small ship built and the uh, first section of the base done. So let's go ahead and get on to bag number four, or bags uh, number four. How's everyone doing? Got lots of nice dark red 1x2 plates with round ends. Yeah, I, uh, I can understand being salty about that, Bahamut. Do you know anyone else who plays that you could trade with who might get something that you want? Or you could even play Anti. Ah, that's unfortunate. Alright. So let's see. Starting out. Go ahead and bring this down a bit. And we got... The arch, let me also get these uh, plates out of the way. There we go. Uh, some gates and a shooting cannon. Also the cannon base, which I kind of want to pull one of the one of the my old ones out and see if they're they're still the same exact shape. I think they might be. You used your only favor on the hobby shop owner to get an empty box that uh, boosters come in because you, it had uh, a Johnny Goldmain artwork on it. Nice. Well, that's something at least. It's nice that you know the uh, hobby shop owner. Do they have like uh, any in-store? game events or something like that, that you might be able to meet other people and let them know, hey, I'm looking for these if you know of anyone else who has one and is looking to offload it. Yeah, I mean, they just throw those away anyway, so. Or hopefully recycle. Yellow one by four there. Okay. Rotate this around and pull it in. Make sure that it is on screen. There we go. I mean, if they have like, um, you know, gaming events or something like that, you might be able to meet other people and trade cards. Like if they have a, a weekend game or something like that. He does have a section in the store where he buys individual cards and sells them. Yeah, but it's nicer to trade because, you know, you've got cards that you don't care about and someone else has cards that they don't care about. And it's not costing you anything extra. All right, let's get the uh, leaves out of here, too. There we go. All right, white one by two goes right there. Now some plates. Don't think he does that with magic? I think he does that with Pokemon and whatnot? Well, if you ask, he might start uh, keeping an eye out, and that could... That could start a little uh, weekly league or something. Mm 
I mean, my local hobby shops did uh, way back when, but it was also way back when. <laughs> I'm talking, oh, you know, 25 plus years ago. Doesn't have space the space for doing events. That's understandable. All right, get some nice spots in here for shooting the uh, the guns out. Lots of yellow ingot. Tiles. All right, so I need four more. I mean, I didn't go to uh, those events at my local hobby shops that often. I mostly just played with friends. Back in the day, because I'm old. So old. Found one of those bubble tumbler things where you flip it over and colored bubble things go down the pattern to the bottom section. And I don't know what those are. All right, so you get two one by two bricks here and here. One by one brick right there. One by one plate. And double stacks of one by one plates. Turn, please. Thank you. There we go. Want to get these uh, plates nice and straight. All right, some more exposed brick. Right there. Get uh, two uh, one by one plates with clips. There and there, as well as here and here. Dark red one by one cylinder plate. And a headlight brick with a one by one tile slope. So I did get the um, Orient Express in and the um, the lighthouse should be in tomorrow or the day after, or like Monday or something like that. Um, I do have something that I want to build when this is done, uh, but as soon as that is, as soon as we finish that, we will get started on both of those, uh, sets. So, definitely keep an eye out for that. I'm excited. Three one by ones with uh, clips here. There we go. All right, some uh, large macaroni. Mm, macaroni. Bubble, bubble Motion Tumbler by Toysmith. Yeah, I've never heard of that before. I have no idea what that is. I 
Another one by one plate. Two one by fours. Corner brick. One by three, and another one by one with clip. Right there. That's a lot of one by ones with clips. All right. One by six and a one by two with round ends. Right there. It's interesting using the uh, the one by two round end pieces for like exposed brick that the uh, plaster or stucco has come off on. It's an interesting way of doing it. Okay, some one by one tiles. There we go. All right, another angle brick over here. One by two plate. Another one by six plate. Let's try to find the mold marks, if we can. There we go. Okay, so uh, three one by two bricks with ingot tiles. Did a 90 minute walk that involved stopping at the hobby shop, Safeway, and coming back home. Um, I'm doing pretty well. Having fun with the uh, data entry in my uh, off time. Woohoo, data entry! actually kind of like data entry. My shoulders don't like it, though. <laughs> Alright, so we got some nice crenellations here. It's uh, something similar as a kid. Ah, oh, gotcha. No, I, I just have no idea. Like, it doesn't sound familiar to me at all. Like, anything that I might have had, so, or seen. That is all. And one by two plate. There we go. All right, three one by two round and plates. I mean, it sounds interesting. I just can't like picture what you what what it is that that you mean, kind of thing. You know, that's all. Okay, get that in there. And a one by one brick with clip. Alright, I'll take a look at that right now. Let's see. Oh, I think I might have uh, seen some like toy things like that. I don't know, the shape is, is unfamiliar, but the uh, the bubble part does seem familiar. I 
Howdy, little bunny. How's it going? Get that on there. Where is the mold mark? There it is. The bubble part is what fascinates you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I get that. I think it was a friend who had something similar. All right. Pair of corner plates. One by one plate with clip and a one by one plate. There we go. Annoyed that it's Friday because you've been sick for two days? Uh. I hope you're feeling better soon. That is unfortunate. Stopped functioning as the bubbles dried up. Well, they might have, like, lost their consistency and mixed or something like that. I don't know. Alright, another one by two plate there, and a one by one. Two one by three arches. Definitely better. Well, I'm glad for that. See, that's why I avoid people. People just carry germs. You know, it's just, just so much easier to not deal with them and then not get sick. <laughs> All right, so we've got our larger arches rather than these. They do make that does make a nice uh, concentric arch, though. Now the original one, and it always kind of bugged me, but the original El Dorado Fortress had this gap here, whereas this time they're nice and they fill it in. Ports it away for dire emergencies. <laughs> Alright, so get one of the smaller arches here. I do like that we have these new smaller arches. Put that there, a one by one brick. Go. Having to deal with people is still a human thing currently? Well, I mean... I don't mean that I don't deal with them, I just minimize. It's nice to minimize. Alright, get another arch there. Get another arch hall junior there. Nothing uh, filling up the gap yet. There we go. And a... One by three arch down there, and a one by one brick with clip. Where are you? There you are. Nope, don't don't roll down the ramp. 
Really digging the yellow and white contrast on the bricks there. It pops. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. It, it was, uh, I mean, it's one of the things that really grabbed the, uh, the old, um, uh, like, Imperials faction with the, the pirate stuff. And howdy, Red Hyena. How's it going? All right, there we go. Get these on. Make sure they're straight. Another one by one plate in here. There we go. One of the nice things about these uh, these round end plates is how much like wiggle room you can get with them and stuff like that. It really makes for uh, I mean that's using them all straight here, but it does mean that you can get some nice uh, angles, nice connections, lock things in and stuff like that. Doing good. Love the idea of a white brick castle like structure as opposed to standard gray. Well, I, I think the idea is that this is brick. Like that's what the dark red is. Um, with, uh, like, plaster or stucco. And it's the, uh, the plaster stucco type stuff that is coming off. That's why some of it is, uh, is red. Not entirely sold on using that, using those pieces, but I get what they're going for. Howdy, not a rogue AI. How's it going? Okay, a pair of one by three arches on top there. And this long brick there. Sailors, pirates, and guards all have to eat. What's cooking? Fish? Coconuts? Plantains? Well, I don't know. You, you tell me. You're the designers. Okay, get that on there. Okay, let's make our cauldron with its handle. And get that right on top there. Okay, and we get a torch. With a flame. goes in right there. Uh, a key. Right here. Underneath the, uh, the front. So interesting enough, the, uh, the original uh, molds for these uh, muskets, I could probably pull one out one of these days. If the camera will focus. There we go. They didn't have as deep of a recession here on the uh, button. They didn't have this little hole here. They were solid. I think that's mostly, like, um, to save on uh, plastic. But I think you can. Yeah. So you can fit something in there. If it's the right size. You could have a, a musket misfiring or something like that. I mean, if you need a nap, you need a nap. 
I, I do appreciate you uh, you hanging around though. So we get a musket there. Get a musket there. Get a saber here. Okay, another musket here. And a saber here. Nice weapons uh, all ready to be used. And the sack. I guess of food. Right there. It's a magic musket that shoots fireballs. It's pretty hefty magic. Let's go ahead and turn that around. Get more of these guys in here. I mean, it's still pretty powerful magic, is all I'm saying. turned around so that the mold mark is on the inside. There we go. I would be highly amused by uh, someone point blank uh, firing a musket that does fireballs though. That would be pretty fa that would be pretty fantastic. Great way to uh, just, you know, kill the entire party. Right, one by five there. I don't know why this couldn't be put on before. Oh yeah, I'd love it even more in the phlogiston. Because that would just blow up right in their face. Just just instantly. So good. Alright. Large plates. So 8x8. Eight eight. And a 6x6. Six Okay, another pair of torches. Get that right in there. And this one. Right there. Alright, then we get our doors. Not the leaves. It's interesting using these uh, these doors instead of uh, um, what the original one had, which was uh, the old wooden doors. Of course, they don't have those old wooden doors anymore. Sadly. All right. Okay, so this is going to be, uh, at least from this part, oh yeah, yeah, from this part on up, other than the color of this piece, uh, and the fact that these are smaller leaves rather than the original large leaves, uh, a classic uh, palm tree.
does not want to go. Those do not want to go down. Come on. Get. There we go. That's that one down. <sighs> that one down. I do not know how easily those are going to come off now. But neither here nor there at this point. Howdy up, Cody. How is it going? How much interchangeability do you think there might be between this version of the fortress and the original? Oh, uh, no, you could not put the original doors on there. They had completely different uh, um, pieces to connect them in. The, these doors are connected on with clips. The others use the one by one by two bricks with the two tiny nubs. This tree goes over here. So yeah, not, uh, no interchangeability there. That's one of the reasons why those doors don't exist. I just wish that they would bring them back in some form or another. They do have, um, you remember the, uh, the round, the square with round top door with a, um, a window in it? a round top window in it. Um, those doors do have the same uh, shape, but they don't have the same, like they use regular clips. Uh, picture the old doors as um, split. I don't think this one used uh, the bigger doors. Where is the uh, old mark here? No idea where the mold mark is. All right, well, whatever. But yeah, I loved those doors. Those doors were so good and so useful and did so many cool things. Um, but because they don't have the the uh, hinges anymore, can't can't really do anything with them. So this is what I was uh, thinking of with the the wheels. So the pirate ship that we built on a week ago Wednesday, um, it had it had train wheels here rather than these hubs. So I'm just kind of surprised that they went with these here. Although this is definitely a more Classic design. Is there anything on the top there? There is not. Okay. There we go. Get that there. And that goes in right there. So this, you might wonder what this is for. And it is for, you put that in, and you plunger in the... Uh, the cannonball, and then draw it back, and fire. I love shooting cannons. Bigger doors just sounded like a Minecraft mod to add <laughs> big doors to Minecraft. Now, I have two of these, and I should not have two of these. Is there an empty one-by-one -one plate space somewhere? Not that I see. Hold on. So 
So there's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, and yes. All right, I put a one-by-one one plate in there instead of a one-by-one one cylinder. All right. That explains it. There we go. Okay. All right, so... Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, key is going to be spare, so we're going to set that aside. Uh, one by one plates in white and yellow. One by one tile slope in yellow. One by one tile in white. Uh, dark red one by one cylinder plate. Uh, gray wheel hub and a beige um, bucket handle as extra parts. There we go. Now we go to... Bag number five. But yeah, I really do miss the uh, the old the old doors. Um, there were, let's see, uh, one, two, three. I think four, five, six. Six different doors that use that same connection as well as a single shutter, I believe. So it like it was very, very flexible. There was a lot that used that that old uh, hinge piece. Got a, a classic flag here. Very nice. Much thicker clips. These always broke. Way back when. So I think there were three sizes of the, uh, the arch half door. Um... I think the medium was the uh, the last one to come out of those. There was a large square, uh, or a large rectangular door. There was the very old, um, been around forever, um, rectangular door. There was a rectangular half door, which there is a new version of uh, functionally today. And then a large, um, a large rectangular door. Oh, Lego! Lego can break. I have I have broken my fair share over the years. There's his legs. There we go, and we need the feather in it. And a saber. I mean, did you have any of these flags? Or even the smaller flags? There, there is a reason why these clips are a lot thicker now.
and stuff that, like the clear lightning rod things. Well, I don't think I broke any of those, but these these flags and the larger flags, they, those uh, those always broke because they're very fragile, especially the ones that they had then. Very very fragile. All right, uh, white one by four half tiles. They are over here. of bricks. I mean, there are definitely pieces that I did not take super well, super good care of. I can still remember the, uh, the crunch of street signs under my feet. Okay. Here we go. Well, I mean, you could always get this set and uh, and expand it. Stop by a Lego store, get some pick a brick, some white bricks, yellow bricks, that sort of thing. But at least I believe in the sign of Zeta. Yes, yes. Always believe in a sign of Zeta. Nope, oh, that was not on camera. Sorry about that. There we go. I might actually bring the uh, the camera up a little bit like that. We'll see how this goes, maybe. I did King's Quest stuff and Final Fantasy stuff in Lego. Yeah, I think unfortunately you probably have to paint that yourself. Look forward to a, st a time when you can start building some of the sets you got, but you need to finish your uh, move. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> understandably uh, going to put a damper on some things. It's a weird part to have right there. Oh, I just, uh, like the original King's Quest 1, um, I basically built the, uh, the world in Lego form, or at least parts of it. Had, like, the giant holding the chest, and, um, used, uh, a forest man figure for King Graham, or at least the hat, or Sir Graham at the time. I made a brick-built dragon to uh, for him to throw a bucket of water in in his face. Well, just don't mix up and and uh, paint the Lego and not the battle battle tech stuff. <laughs> there. 
I mean, it was awesome to me. Um, I was a kid, so... I don't know how good it ever, any of it was. There might be some, like, bits and pieces of it still put together in boxes somewhere. Depends a lot on... what happened when. I didn't even know that there were uh, King's Quest novels. I do have the, um... Oh, I don't even remember what it was called, but the, the second edition of the, essentially, the strategy guide, which did have the games in story form. As well as, like, maps and solutions and all the other stuff. That was pretty cool. All right, let's see. Now we get the uh, front crenellation bits. Oops. Howdy, Cape Sword. How's it going? Yeah, that would be that would be pretty cool. I mean, I think I use, like, uh, the old 32x32 32 32, uh, base plates to, uh, as each section of the, the map kind of thing. Like all the minifigs that come with this one? Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. And I do like that, again, you get a nice mixture of, uh, male and female characters, because, uh, with the original one, there was, like, a handful of female figures. Like, one of the reasons why I like the, the female Lego minifigs is because, as a kid, I got so few of them. It's like, you get one, and... Holy cow, you have a female minifig kind of thing. You got more of them in town, but, uh, than anything else. Bracket, where are you? There you are. I'm doing pretty well. Like, there was basically... Well... Early on, there was one pirate minifig, a uh, female pirate minifig, and... Um... You eventually had, like, there were a couple, uh, um, castle ladies here and there. Um, but then you had the Forestman minifig. Lady Forestman minifig and stuff like that. It was just very rare stuff. So it was always, always fantastic to get, to actually get a, a female minifig. And I'm still kind of in that that headspace, even though LEGO absolutely provides way more female minifigs now. Like, any time they can do so, they try to give you, like, equal numbers, and if there's only one minifig, then I think they, they pretty consciously try to um, make sure that, like, the, the numbers of... of male and female minifigs in the small sets are, are balanced across all of them. But like the Speed Champion sets with the uh, um, two minifigs, you get two cars and two minifigs, they basically always have one male and one female uh, minifig. That's great. I love it. This set has a little bit of an imbalance, and that's just because of the generic um, soldier guys. 
I believe they're all male. Get that nice window up there. Howdy, Lord Canis. We're snuggling cats while thinking up uh, which of the last two series to work on next. Yeah, like, it, it's so good that they that they're doing that now. And not just because I like getting a, a nice balance. Um, it's also just fantastic for uh, kids to get a nice balance as well. And that's one of the great things about the um, the D and D set and the upcoming D and D um, collectible minifigs is is just the fact that it's gonna have like two heads for like it had the the um, the D and D set had two heads for each of the figures and the CMFs are gonna have two heads for most of the figures as well. Posted a picture of the King's Quest book trilogy. All right. Let me take a look at that. Huh. Is that four, five, and six? Or are they just, like, their own... I guess they're, they must be their own thing, right? Rather than based on any of the uh, the games? What is it, starring Alexander, and then Graham, and then Rosala? Well, what's, uh, what's the plot of the ones that you have? Nope. Nope. No one by one there. I mean, I for one would definitely want the, uh, the See No Weevil one, just because A, great joke, uh, great pun, and, uh, B, it looks like it stars Rosala. Rosala does have the best of the King's Quest games. Logan Castle had Alexander, you believe, from going to save his father's soul from an evil wizard sorcerer with a wizard apprentice set aside. Yeah, so that 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 sounds like a not game storyline. <laughs> Oops. That fits under there. Second book had the king going to save the queen of the forest elves? Yeah, that's not one of the games either. Alright, we got our little uh, gun mounts here. Wish that King's Quest type adventure games would get a revival type movement. I mean, there there are still some of those out there. Like, uh, Dark Side Detective um, is definitely in that vein. Um, but yeah, they're, they're mostly done by independent people, unfortunately. like small studios or independent studios using uh, adventure game designer, I think. Something like that. 
So these uh, these guns are very oddly uh, positioned. It, it would definitely be uh, a <laughs> little little limited in their their range of uh, fire here. You don't miss moon logic? I do. I understand not, though. I do. Perhaps you don't miss the uh, part where you throw a bridle on a snake to make a Pegasus, though. Yeah, I, I will say that the later games tend to be better. Uh, I think I think two is is especially bad. King's Quest two is especially bad in that respect. Um, I think most of the others are pretty solid in how they handle it. Uh, admittedly, you know, there is... There is a lot of death in the King's Quest games, if you mess up, but... There is one upcoming one that takes heavy inspiration from the Colonel's Request. Yes. Um, if it's the one that I'm thinking of... Um, like, the, uh, the lady designing it um, actually showed some of her s screens to the art designer of the original Colonel's Bequest, and um, the person was like, wait, are those mine? Like, he actually thought that uh, they were his, his designs, which is a pretty good compliment for someone making one like that. You had to play King's Quest 2 without a save? You don't know what... A, you didn't know what a save disc was. Oh! Ooh. I mean, I guess on one hand, um, that would... that would strongly incentivize you to, uh, make copious notes. You're disappointed in the sequel to Colonel's Bequest, the solution to the mystery. Well, I will be getting to that soon enough. Maps plenty with preferred routes. I might have to look up uh, those, those books, though, Bahamut. Too many games to play, yeah. Luckily, that's the nice thing about uh, doing Let's Plays, is that it forces me to actually play these games that I have been wanting to play for a long time and actually finish them, generally. Alright, so we get six one by twos with end bars. There we go, and a door handle. Is it? No. There we go. So there's the door. You'd recommend it. The first two books are awesome reads. I need to find what I did with my uh, uh, Pride and Chronicles books too. I've been ha I've had a hankering to reread those for a little while. Oops. Rotate it around. Let's see. There we go. Move it back so you can see inside a little bit better. Howdy, Shield of Hope. How's it going? We'll go ahead and build our table here. The governor's office holds his most prized possessions and important documents. So 
So there we go, and get the map. And an ink blotter, I guess, maybe, something like that. Feather for the writing, and a candle. There we go. Nice little desk in there. Get our cannon on here. Okay, and once again, Get that stick in there. Whee! And finally, we get our flag. There we go. Did I miss a place to put a spare rifle, musket? Or did it just come with an extra musket? That's two of them. It just came with an extra musket. Interesting. All right. Lego desk sets are so cozy. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do really like uh, the design. I mean, Lego furniture in general is pretty nice. I've done some pretty fun uh, furniture designs myself over the, uh, the years. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and turn that around, and we'll go ahead and. Get the governor up here. Governor Broadside. All right, so spare parts. We've got two small feather, white feathers, one large red feather flame, a gold set of epaulettes, white one by one tile slope, dark red one by one tile, brown one by one cylinder tile with top peg, and a spare brown musket. Like, there was nowhere to clip it on anywhere, so I don't know. So there we go. We got our, our first section of it done. And we will move on to uh, booklet three. Don't look a gift musket in the mouth? Oh, I don't. I don't. All right, bag number six. Actually, we have two bags. So the old style of these uh, walls actually had... Um, recessed one by one slots here to more easily lock them in. I'm not sure why they stopped doing that. Um, they did have more of a base, however. And they also had a uh, projection up there too. Let's go ahead and move some large plates out of the way. Leaves can go out of the way as well. It's a lot of leaves. There we go. Wish more games had some novels like Final Fantasy to sort of flesh out the worlds in each Final Fantasy game. I mean... Oftentimes they're not that well written, 
I find. I had a I had a, a Wizards and Warriors game a book. I don't know if I still do. It was weird. I think it was Wizards and Warriors. All right. So, first of all, we got our our soldier This is epaulets. A red. Here, epaulets. Right over here. There's his legs at least. Buddy Kraken, how's it going? And grab the... Oh, actually, yep, all right. There was another bag number six. That explains it. First fantasy novel you ever bought was Pool of Radiance because you'd just gotten the computer game. Thought it was okay at the time? Yeah, that's an okay one. The adventure module is way too computer gamey. The, uh, the novel, at least, is pretty substantially different. There's the Shaco. Where's his uh, backpack? There's his backpack. Love these backpacks. Actually, that might be a lady. Not sure, actually. There we go. So we have our soldier with the uh, the Shaco hat. Very classic design, and I think it might be a lady because of the eyebrows. Not the eyebrows, the uh, uh, eyelashes. Tends to be one of the ways that Lego does uh, ladies. Pool of Radiance novel has mid-level characters instead of starting ones. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's just... The, um, the overall story is, is similar, but um, it does not follow the, uh, the game or the module super closely. Introduced you to a lot of other fantasy stuff, Lord of the Rings, Shannara, etc. I cannot remember what my first uh, fantasy books were, but the Pride and Chronicles were definitely amongst them. I think. Hard to say. The memories, they are not that great at this point. <laughs> I'm getting to be old. Yeah, I really liked the uh, the early Shannara books. I, I didn't care for the later ones, I think. I don't remember at, at what point it kind of fell apart for me. I was not. I've never read any of those. I don't know what Hawkmoon is, for example. I obviously know who El Elric is. I don't think I would have liked them from what I'm aware of, though. And I've never read stuff like Conan and, and things like that. Yeah, I don't like dark fantasy that much. Eh. Ah, I mean, to me, that kind of thing doesn't matter. Um, like, my 
bigger thing is just whether I would enjoy it or not. And um, I don't like dark fantasy. Just not my taste. I have not read Tom's Covenant either. I mean, I can't comment on that because I've never heard him say anything one way or the other, but D&D uh, &D absolutely took a lot from Moorcock. A lot. Yeah, I think I did read uh, the Dark Over stuff. Sandy bits in here. I mean, I still kind of feel like I should read some of it to kind of see where um, the the D and D ideas were coming from um, but at the same time like just what I know of the uh, the series just doesn't appeal to me and that's not any kind of dig on it at all um, I'm I'm perfectly happy for people to like whatever they like and stuff like that so I don't really know anything about Moorcock, so I can't, I'm not, don't see much point in commenting on him. I think your favorite uh, author as a kid had to be uh, Christopher Rowley. He wrote two series he absolutely loved as a kid. I don't know who that is. What did he write? Read some article about H.G. Wells and his buddies used to war game, like with dice rolls and toy soldiers and big maps on floors in like 1900. Yeah, there's there's uh, uh, definitely some early war games that uh, could have, you know, become uh, role playing. But I mean, ro like war games themselves have been around for a very, very long time. Um, it, it just, uh, you know, it's a pretty old hobby and also like actual um, way to teach strategy and stuff like that. No one can like anything I don't like, said All Dragon goes to publish online. That's actually true. That's actually true, Mad Martin. No one is allowed to uh, like anything that I don't like. This is this is factually uh, accurate. I mean, wargaming has been around for a long time. You have to have rules to actually wargame. That's the thing. And I mean, in the classic sense of wargaming, as in teaching strategy. He wrote the uh, Basil Broketail series. Never heard of them.
I've never read Narnia either. I never, uh, never was particularly interested. I mean, chess is a highly, like, chess is a game first. There, there's a difference between a war game and a game that is about war. Wargaming actually developed out of teaching strategy. I recommend them. The only uh, gripe you'd say is that they can be a little dryly written. I mean... I've I've read plenty of dry stuff. I've read Robert Jordan. Would you like to play a game? Yeah, exactly. So we got a uh, chest with a flat lid there. Let's get that right there. Yeah, it was Shall We Play a Game, that's right. Yeah, pretty... pretty um, blatant uh, um, anti-war film there, wasn't it? <laughs> Not that that's a bad thing. Would that there was more like it. War. What's it good for? Absolutely nothing. You routinely refuse to play games. That is the way you win. Can't argue with it. Can't argue with it. You know, except for those games where uh, if you don't play, uh, you lose, which I'm great at. It's tough to make an anti-war film. I think it's tough to make an anti-war film that everyone understands is anti-war. It is definitely not tough to make one, but not everyone understands the point. Like, Mobile Suit Gundam, at least the first one, is very anti-war. And of course, uh, Godzilla was anti-nuclear weapons. The cask is leaking. Perhaps those pirates should have uh, practiced their shooting skills elsewhere. Nah. I mean, it's leaking because it's got a tap on it and the others don't. Need to watch the original Gundam and then also Z again? Yeah, do it. Do it. And then Char's counterattack. I really... Like, really do wish that they had made a compilation uh, redo of double Zeta rather than Zeta. Zeta doesn't need that. Zeta moves along really well despite its length. Double Zeta? Double Zeta needs that. A leaking cask is a fire hazard waiting to go off? I mean, many of these things are <laughs> fire hazard waiting to go off. It's fire hazards galore. I think I would say double Zeta is all over the place. Alt counterattack. You actually don't think you've uh, ever watched that one? Oh, really? It's on Netflix still. It's got a great theme song at the end too.
El Dorado, the Fire Hazard Fortress. I mean, that kind of goes for, like, most ancient fortresses. You watch Double Zeta and you can't remember much about what happened? I mean, it took nine episodes to get going, for one thing. Don't have Netflix. Ah. Fair enough. I mean, I own it, so... Probably own two copies at this point. I think I have it on DVD and Blu-ray. <laughs> ZZ, you got a bit into it and haven't come back to it? It's it's a... Yeah, so, like, the problem is, is that it's, it's good in the middle... Um, it's bad at the beginning, it's good in the middle, it's got a, it's got some cringe close to the end, and then it gets good again. For like the last couple episodes. There, there are a few things that you kind of need to uh, suspend your disbelief for, but... I mean, Shara's counterattack is also, um, like, not only is it, um, you know, what you come to expect from, from Gundam, but it's also um, got some elements of, uh, like, Cold War type stuff. I also need to dive into more of Votoms? Yeah. Yeah. I, I consider Votoms, like, the, the second great. If Gundam didn't exist, then Votoms would be the uh, the best 80s mecha anime. It's got some pretty good uh, twists in it as well. I actually have the Blu-ray uh, for Votoms, and I have not yet watched the um, the OVAs and stuff, and I need to get around to doing that. I need to take some time to do that myself. Another leaf. There it is. I'm not doing a whole lot of data entry. That would probably be the best time. <laughs> I think you like 0080 and 8th MS team so much because they didn't do the aforementioned philosophizing. Eh. I mean... Those are, those are very good um, from... Uh, especially from the perspective of, like... The civilians for 0080 and the everyday soldiers for uh, 8th MS team. It would also be remiss if you didn't mention Victory Gundam in your Anime Bay Lupe. <laughs> I need to rewatch that too. I got through part of it and uh, my, my watching trend fell off. I need to uh, get back to that. I should rewatch Turn A Gundam as well. It's very, very solid. It's very weird, but very solid. It's always good to uh, get some more Sid Mead in your life anyway. Uh, 
let's see where the corner brick. There it is. You want to rewatch Murder, She Wrote? I kind of want to do two, actually. I haven't watched that in a while. Part of it is is there's a, a lot of great guest actors in that that I, I kind of want to see. Yeah, like Jordy LaForge showing up. Not as Jordy LaForge, of course. Shakes fist at Victory Gundam. <laughs> Actually, that's uh, something to consider um, is like a, a watch party on Discord. I might try something like that one of these days. Plates. I need to actually get uh, get copies of uh, MacGyver and Do South on like DVD or so or uh, Blu-ray or something. My favorite TV shows. Would we watch the last episode of Miller's Report 2? Yes. Ab well, the last episode, not Miller's Report. This morning, getting something to eat in the heat of the night was on TV, and the guest star was Robert O'Reilly, best known to Star Trek fans as Gowron. Nice. Yeah, it's it's fun to uh, watch things and be like, uh, oh, hey, there's Gul Dukat and stuff like that. <laughs> Yes, that is something that I was uh, thinking of because uh, he 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 doesn't have many lines, but he is in that. There's uh, there was some other things that I was watching not too long ago that it was like, holy cow, that's Gold Dukat. It's always a treat when he shows up. Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, specifically, um, and and also like, is it real? Is it not real? Eh. Who knows? Yes, yeah, the AI taxi driver in that movie too. Well, they modeled it after him and he's he does the voice. Cuz he's not actually the taxi driver. All isn't real, he's just a dream. He can't hurt you. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, he's the Johnny Cab in uh Total Recall. Hollywood loves making films based on Philip K. Dick stories, but they always change them. The, I mean, the names. Yes, I know we can remember it for you wholesale would not sell, but it's such a better name. It's also very, very different. 
I love the ending of that, sor that story. What, what was that, Mad Martin? What was that? Do not taunt the all dragon. It's only a screen, he can't hurt me. It's only a screen, he can't hurt me. It's only a screen, he can't hurt me. <laughs> hurt me. <laughs> Flight of the Navigator, that that is one of those things where like I, I, I loved it and then I hated it and then I loved it again very odd. It's, it's a, it is a fantastic movie. Alright, here are the wall pieces. Y'all Dragon will not tell you to get off his lawn. He will bury you beneath his lawn to nourish its green. I mean, you know, the lawn needs nourishment. You had part of the name in your head because you watched it once. Only once? I swear that thing was on, like, the Disney Channel every week. Is Ald also the lawn lawnmower man? No, no, I, I do not like mowing the lawn, so uh, no. It does have Pierce Brosnan in it, in it though. I've not seen that in a while. I haven't seen uh, Flight of the Navigator in a while either. I want to rewatch that. I think the most interesting, weirdest movie you've owned and watched was Warriors of Virtue. I do not know that one. I mean, the weird. I I think the weirdest movie I've ever watched um, was when I was a kid. At some point, probably late at night, um, and on one of the cable channels, Basket Case came on. If you've ever seen Basket Case, you're probably nodding to yourself right now, going, "Mm-hmm, mm-hmm." There we go. Get that uh, barrel in there. We get a bag here. I kind of remember seeing some behind-the-scenes on Flight of the Navigator where Fred Savage was uh, getting used to working with the puppet thingy. That wasn't Fred Savage. It was someone else who uh, does, does admittedly look kind of like him. I, MST3K things don't count. Oh, I've never actually read any uh, Stephen King. It's the oldest of the alds. Howdy, Duke Darkwood. How's it going?
Am I the only one who has seen uh, Basket Case? Am I the only one going nodding along going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've only seen the, seen his uh, movies based on King stuff. Like, I know King has written things other than uh, horror, but I just always associated with him with horror, and I'm not really interested in horror, so... Daryl was very good. I think I am. Never heard of Basket Case. It's a low-budget horror movie. Very weird. The the premise is basically um, a there's a guy with a uh, basically a conjoined twin, um, but. A, a highly, highly deformed conjoined twin, um, and uh, basically just a head with two arms, um, and doctors separated them, and so they go out to get revenge on the doctors for separating them, and and he carries around uh, the his his twin in a basket, hence basket case. Plus, of course, he's crazy. Like, you've heard of it and uh, seen some YouTube clips about the movie? It's weird. Like, I probably saw it, uh, saw, like, a, an, a cut version on television as opposed to, like, uncut, because cable. Um, like, not non-premium cable. <laughs> it's very weird. And the twin's name is Belial, yeah. So someone knows about it. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Oh yeah, it was successful enough because it was super low budget. And horror movies, like one of the reasons why everyone, uh, or at least you know, way back when everyone did uh, low budget horror movies, is because low budget horror movies were very easy to sell and also the most likely to get their money back. Definitely one of the uh, squickier films that you've seen. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is a weird one. Yeah, I've seen Pumpkinhead. You know enough. So you haven't seen it then. So Duke Darkwood is the only one who's actually seen it. Joey Kramer is a kid in Flight of the Navigator. Yeah, I don't know if he's been in other things. So many things you've never heard of. I mean, that's fair. Like, you can only have seen so many things, honestly. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, I've seen Pumpkinhead too. You saw the dead meat kill count covering it. Gotcha. Need to attack pesky pirates from a different angle? You can move the cannons on the towers back and forth or turn them or move them to other areas of the fortress. It'd be very heavy to move to other areas of the fortress. Uh, you mean Lance Hendrickson? It did have Lance Hendrickson, yes. Having a mom into horror films has exposed you to uh, quite a variety of them in the 80s and 90s. There were a lot of them. It's enough that you uh, basically inured you to the genre. Never became a horror fan, but they don't really scare you. Yeah. They don't really scare me. I just don't really like them in general. I'm, like, not a fan of gore unless it's, like, so over the top that it's just absolutely, completely ridiculous and, and unrealistic. 
then it's just like kind of amusing or weird. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. All right, let's get this on here. Yeah, Evil Dead Absurd. Um, I kind of want to... I, I think I've seen... I don't know if I've ever seen Evil Dead. I'm pretty sure I've seen Evil Dead 2. Uh, it's possible that it's the other way around, that I've seen Evil Dead and not Evil Dead 2. Um, but I do kind of want to... watch that. Either watch it or watch them again sometime. I have seen... like I went to see uh, Army of Darkness in the theaters with my dad. Um... Which, apparently, it didn't do well, uh, which I did not realize, um, because we both loved it. Neither of us having seen Evil Dead before. You realize that you really like the supernatural cat and mouse back and forth those 80s movies had? Just had more of a sense of fun? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I would, I would definitely agree with you there, little bunny. There we go. All right. These uh, these leaves are not going on very easily. <laughs> yeah, uh, Army of Darkness is uh, comedy horror for sure. Like, there is no way that my father would have taken me to something that was uh, like Evil Dead Two kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure if that was my introduction to Bruce Campbell or if uh, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. was. One of those two. But yeah, I was uh, hearing someone comment that not very many people went to see uh, uh, Army of Darkness, and I was like, hey, I'm one of the few, yay! I have fond memories of that. Okay, get a tree there, get a tree there. And I feel like I have missed a torch. Did I miss a torch someplace? Because I have the pieces for a torch. We have this one down here. I don't really see any other clips. Or there could be another torch. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, it's just the one. Okay, very odd. Yeah, there's just this one uh, torch, but I got parts for a second one. And I don't think there should be parts for a second one. They do sometimes have those extra parts, but I don't think they would right now. Okay. Oh. Get you up there. 
So spare parts, we have a, a spare saber, a uh, spare brown lightsaber hilt, a brown, a dark brown lightsaber hilt, I should say, a brown tap, tan one by one plate, dark red one by one round end tile, black one by one cylinder plate with hollow stud, and a trans orange flame, candle flame. All right, let's see. I need to remember how many bags there are. That does not tell me. All right, hold on. Ten. And we are currently on seven. Okay. All right, well, it is about time for us to do a minifig. So let's go ahead and put that back there. Or do some minifigs, I should say. Get out our uh, minifig paraphernalia. Get my sheets. And I think we'll hold the rest of the... Um... Oh, hi, Rain. Uh, I think we'll hold the rest of the uh, Eldorado Fortress for next week at this point. All right, so, series 11. Let me go ahead and get my minifig box. Okay. D6 to start off. All right, that's a one, so we're going for that column. D20, 19 is too high. 19 is again too high. 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, so let's go ahead and start a prediction. Can all guess what's inside the minifig pack? Let's go. Get your predictions in. All right, Mad Martin, have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much for coming on out. So, let's see. What did Bahama get? Rolled a 10. All right. Uh, so, you rolled the... Um, uh, the welder, which there could be another welder, but there were four. We've already gotten four of them, so I don't know about that. Um, not a rogue AI six. That is the gingerbread man. Not a rogue AI got the uh, uh, barbarian, and my D twenty got a two. That would be the scarecrow. Yes, Lal Bunny, we did miss your input, and totally understandable that you were. Uh, ill and everything. I figured it was something like that, you know, something came up. Not necessarily illness, but figured something came up. Minotaur gunpowder mixer, so we can so we can get blown up. Alright, 50 seconds remaining. Go ahead and get your predictions in. Wow, the rain's really coming down fast. Coming down right now. A centaur bartender. You would not want to get on his bad side. He would he would kick you, and and that would be that would be like uh, worse than getting kicked by the uh, the, the donkey in uh, Gold Rush. All right, twenty seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. Can I guess what's inside the minifig pack? Move my die. Let me go ahead and get my timer all ready. There we go. Why would you buy a donkey as a pack animal? They are ornery. Donkeys actually make pretty good pack animals. All right. And actually, it's not about buying it. Uh, if you just walk in the wrong place uh, at the beginning of the game, it'll kick you and you die instantly. All right. And go. Let's see. What do we have? What do we have? Um, 
Okay. Wow, rain's really coming down. All right, 11.51, we have the Lederhosen Lady. Lederhosen Lady. Let's see if that is correct. It is Lederhosen Lady. I felt her hair. So it's uh it's soft plastic. All right, so let's choose that outcome. Within 20 seconds, complete that prediction. And Kalidor, Lord Canis and Kinshear getting the hams. Very nice. Ab Cody Isov and Kikraken going for 20 to 50. Uh Prescott and Shield of Hope going for 50 to 60. And Bahamut and Lel Bunny going for no. Mmm, hams. Nom nom nom. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, the rain is really coming down out there. Wow. Holy cow. Um, actually... Yeah, no, actually this goes there. Only one face. Do I have the Lederhosen guy around here? Yes, I do. Uh, so does Millie Vanilli, little bunny. <laughs> Sorry, I had to had to do that. I do not like the uh, the skirts with the um, the break right here because it it they never quite look right. Come on. Somebody, yes, yes, that was that was called Prince. There we go. Does anyone hold a pretzel like that? I mean, there aren't that many pretzels this big. So no, uh, no printing on the back of her um, dress, but I love, I love that torso. Like the gold, and the. Uh, it's really hard to see, but she's got like brown, uh, brown lacing there. It's really nice. And we have uh, the leader hosen guy uh, to go with her, also holding a pretzel. These two go fantastically together. I love that. I mean, the big question we have to ask is, who will stop the rain? So I love those two figures. Those are great figures. All right, we got our Lederhosen gal, and we have a one, two, three, four, five, six left that we have not gotten. I don't think it means uh, quite like that. Okay. So, series 18. Get a D6 going. We'll get the gingerbread man eventually. Alright, four, so we're going for the middle. D20. Nine. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. 
Is the guy a nun too? And I don't don't think either of them are nuns. Unless that's how they identify religiously. Uh, I can all guess what is inside the minifig pack. Let's go. All right. Uh, so, Nadarogi, I got five. That would be the Rocket Man. Bahamut got two. That would be the uh, the Red Brick guy. Uh, Abcody got ten. That would be the Birthday Cake guy. And I got nineteen, so I got to re-roll. Three, so that would be Brick Girl, Brick Lady. So let's go ahead and get your predictions in. A minute 20 to go. Simply have to be a Minotaur Quill Procurer. Man. Why why would why would he want to go after the uh um porcupines that way? All right, get your predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Centaur sports commentator. Now, is this a centaur who comments on sports? Uh, commentates on sports, or is this a human who commentates on centaur sports? 30 seconds to go. Get your predictions in. Yes! Hmm. That's, uh... It's not exactly a yes or no question. <laughs> Arm Vorax trainer. <laughs> should definitely have more gnomes. Alright, just a few seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. Anyone could take on a porcupine and be a minotaur. I don't know. I don't know. I think they might might need someone with a little bit more armor, like maybe a turtle. All right. Predictions are closed. Three set. And... Go. All right. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Okay. We got a, we got a brick costume. Now the question is... Is it the lady or the guy? I've got to find the hair. That is the only part that will give it away. All right. 27.08. It is the lady. We do have the lady. How old are turtles? You mean in terms of publish publication history? They're original D&D, &D, Beck Me type stuff from the 80s. All right, that is, in fact, the lady. Find the lady. We found the lady. All right, so that was 26, uh, 27.08, I'm sorry. 27.08. Don't get back on that. Thank you. So 20 to 50, complete the prediction. But... My die was correct. I got a three. So let's see, who is getting the hams? Kalidor, Lord Canis, Ice Oven, Krikraken, getting all of the hams. Very nice. Abcody, Kinshir going for within 20 seconds. Preskich going for 50 to 60. And Bahamut and Lel Bunny going for no. Yeah, so they're, 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 they're from the... Uh, um, Beck me D and D stuff. They didn't enter A D and D until uh, my Stara was moved over to uh, A D and D. But they are a PC race for A D and D at that point. That is a huge, huge, huge expression. Uh, I like grin on her face. Stop twisting around, hand. Of course we did, little bunny. I may tease you mercilessly, but I really do enjoy your presence.
Yeah, I missed you too. Don't forget your cornflakes. All right, so here is the uh, Brick Lady. I think this is the same hair that Wildstyle had. It's not just guys who tease people they like. Ladies do it too. Well, there we go. Let's go ahead and mark her down. So, uh, we've gotten the uh, first row. We're missing the uh, the girl with the present. We're missing the policeman, the uh, classic policeman, uh, the birthday cake guy, the um, I think it's a lady, uh, the cactus lady, the cat costume person, the race car guy, the boy with the present. Those are those are the ones that we uh, miss. And all wrecks the mood by <laughs> dying on the breakfast soup hill. I mean, I had to tease, you know. It's in the contract. It's in the contract that you all signed in blood when you joined for watching the channel. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Okay, so let's go ahead and roll for one of these uh, minifigs. So, D6. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, 1, 2, 3. So, that's 5. That is 1. All right. Time to renegotiate. Sorry, there's no renegotiation. Again, I don't make the rules. I just live by them. All right, so I am going to shake it and try to guess what's inside it. Then... I will um, weigh it, and we will try to see if we can guess it that way. Then, well, I'll roll the die first. Um, so go ahead and get your prediction in. Can I guess what's inside the minifig box? So far, we have gotten one, two, three, four, five of the minifigs. So there should be one more on the top register, maybe two. Uh, Bahamut rolled a five. That would be the Emtron guy. You demand a cornflake guy sacrifice? Ah, no, no, ah, ah, no, not my cornflakes. My cornflakes, how dare you. A gift game show host. It'd be a lot of booms. It'd be a lot of booms. A centaur wrestler. Hmm. A minotaur fortress soldier. A dragon went for the guy first, then decided to go for the cornflakes. After all, breakfast soup. That was a pretty funny sacrifice. I'm glad you enjoyed it. 35 seconds to go. I get your predictions in. Not a rogue AI got a seven. Uh, that would be the UFO guy. But we have gotten two. If we get another UFO guy, that means that there are no more in the set. Gifter masters of using grenades in melee combat. Their own. Yes, yes. Um, they are masters of not giving a crap if they blow up. This is true. All right, just a few seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. I do not need my timer anymore. All right, predictions are closed. All right, so uh, I should actually get over to the wait. All right, so first of all, All right, that's a lot of small pieces. Well, the Mtron guy and the Blacktron guy that we've already gotten have a lot of pieces, and we're more likely to get one that we've already gotten than get something else. So I'm going to go for the Blacktron guy again. So it's my, my guess is that it is the Blacktron guy. Let's roll the die, see what it predicts. Six. 
It is predicting the, um, the, the robot nurse. Let's see what the scale says. 16.81. There are not that many 16s. That is too heavy, I think, for the uh, alien tourist. I think it's too heavy for the... Uh, Um, 16.81. That is actually that is actually pretty close to the uh, Blacktron guy. So I'm going to say that the, the weight is saying the Blacktron guy. So let's see if that is correct. Right, I should have gotten my, uh, my app out. Uh, once again, this is the uh, OMG Bricks app, which has a minifig scanner. Let's see what it says. That's saying the Blacktron guy. All right. That was my guess. All right, that is another Blacktron guy, once again. All right, let's choose the prediction. Wow, no one going for the, uh, well, almost no one going for the yes with the die roll. All right, so yes with guess, that was correct. Let's complete that prediction. All right, Shield of Hope and Kraken getting the hams. A lot of hams. 20,000 hams there for Shield of Hope. Very nice. Preskich, Lord Canis, and Isovan going for Yes with Weight. Lelbunny going for Yes with Die Roll. Kalidor, Bahamut, and Kinshir going for No. Why does an app for emerging economies have a... Uh, have a function to uh, read Lego barcodes because uh, emerging economies are very interested in Lego objects. I mean, if you were in an emerging economy, wouldn't you want Lego? I know I would. All right, Bahamut, have a good rest of your night. So we get the uh, the mohawk piece on as well. And there we go. So we actually cannot sit down with that uh, that leg there, but I suppose, let me see. Yeah, actually, that uh, that leg is not able to uh, to go up. It's it's able to go backward. Like he can do the splits pretty pretty tremendously, but he cannot sit forward. So he cannot sit down. But here is our Blacktron mutating Blacktron guy. Come on, poor mutant. Yeah, I know. Can never sit down. Yeah, it's the same piece as the harpy leg. And the, um, I believe it was also used for the, um, the satyr. So he's got a, uh, he's got a mohawk, a rebreather. And we actually get one of each. One extra rebreather and one extra mohawk. Very cool. All right. Well, that is going to be where we wrap it up tonight. Still have some more of the El Dorado Fortress to do next week. That should wrap us up. Um, I do have something else that I'm going to build after that, but I have gotten the uh, Orient Express in. Uh, that did arrive today, and I suspect the... Um, uh, the lighthouse will be arriving uh, either tomorrow or uh, Monday. So once we finish up El Dorado and the thing that I want to build next after it, then we will be diving into those two. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that because I know I am. 
Just as you're beginning the final night of your uh, build, just open bag 35 Barador. Well, there's always the uh, the videos on YouTube, the old uh, the p the previous uh, build sessions. All if I could have anything as a perfect grade, what would it be? Uh, I'm not a big fan of perfect grade. Um, I have um, I have Shars, Zaku, and uh, Mark II and Zeta as perfect grades, and they're clunky. They really are. Um, I would say if I could get anything at all that I'd want, then it would be the thing that I want the most of for a Master Grade as well, a uh, Galbaldi Beta. They would never, ever make a Galbaldi Beta, though. So, <laughs> that is that is right out. They'd have to be extremely desperate for uh, something. Perfect perfect Grade is uh, uh, 1 to 60. So it's larger than uh, Master Grade. All right, but that is going to wrap us up for tonight. Uh, let's see. Ah, no one that I follow is uh, doing any uh, Lego stuff, so uh, I want to thank you guys for coming on out. We will be back tomorrow for some more Spelljammer. We'll be back on Monday for some more Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. We will be back on Wednesday for more Lego building, building something else. Um, yeah, I like I like master grades. I love master grades. They're great. Uh, high grades are okay. Certain ones are okay, but I, I mostly don't. I'm not interested in them. They 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 aren't as detailed as I like. Um, but they can be fun little builds. Uh, and then of course we'll be back next Friday for uh, more um, sort of mana and finishing up the El Dorado Fortress. So I want to thank you guys for coming on out. And I shall see you next time. See you then, everyone.